Hi and welcome, my name is Julianne Cost, and on this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at some backup strategies. Now, I have to say this is just the way I back up my work, so yours might differ, but at least I want to show you why I back up the way I do and how I set things up in Lightroom so that you can back up your work as well. All right, so let's take a look. Um, there's kind of two scenarios. The first scenario is you simply have one computer, whether it's a desktop machine or a laptop machine, and you have everything on that machine. So your operating system, your applications, all of your photographs, your Lightroom catalog, the presets, the preferences, everything is on that machine. And if that is the situation that you're in, that is absolutely fantastic. The only thing you need to do is make sure that you back up that entire drive, right? Because probably you'll only have one internal drive. You need to find some software, whether you're on the Mac and you want to use Time Machine or if you want to use Windows Backup, whatever software you find, you just need to make sure you do it because I can't tell you the number of people that I talk to that do not have their machine backed up. And it's not just your photos that you want to back up. It is the entire machine. And as we move forward in this tutorial, you'll see why, because there are a lot of different aspects or lots of different components of Lightroom and your image catalog that you'll want to consider backing up. So the easiest thing, if you just have one computer, everything's on it, just make sure you buy another hard drive that is the same size or larger and back up everything to it. All right, so that's probably the simplest situation. Now, it gets a little bit more difficult and we're going to move to this image right here. And by the way, obviously you guys can tell that I hand drew these images, so I apologize, but it was the easiest way I could get this to come across without videotaping my studio. So obviously here I have a monitor and a desktop machine. That's at least what the drawing is supposed to be. It doesn't have to be a desktop machine with a monitor. It could be a laptop with a monitor. My point here is that I have some files on my main computer, but all of my photographs, my collection of photographs is so large that I cannot put them all on that internal drive. So I must go to some external source. So you can see that I have an external drive right there. But before we get to the external drive, let's just talk for a minute about these two internal drives that I have right here. So internal drive one. This is a very fast drive. This is going to be your fastest drive. If you can get a solid state drive in here, that's great. If you can't, you can just use a normal drive. Um, this is going to have your operating system on it. It's also going to have your applications, such as Lightroom, and hopefully it's going to have your Lightroom catalog because you want to put that Lightroom catalog on your fastest drive. Now, if you're not sure what the Lightroom catalog is, don't worry, we'll talk about it in just a minute. Your preferences are also going to be stored here based on the system. Um, the Lightroom presets has a folder on this drive and probably your third-party plugins. Um, if you've purchased any of those, most of the time they get installed inside that Lightroom presets folder, so they should be there. All right, so that's internal drive one. I happen to have on my configuration a secondary internal drive. I actually leave that blank because that's my second fastest drive. Now, for Lightroom, it's not doing me a ton of good to keep it blank, but I use Photoshop all the time and I deal with really large files. So I've actually set up my scratch disk in Photoshop to use that secondary drive. So again, I'm just letting you know why for example, I don't put photographs on that second internal drive. It's because that's saved for scratch disk space. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Photoshop and scratch disk space, in Photoshop, if you're working with a really large file and that file is being processed, like you're doing something to it, and it runs out of RAM, because Photoshop always uses RAM first because RAM's much faster, so it'll try to write and do all that math in RAM. But when it runs out of RAM, it has to do the math somewhere, and it has to save like all those history states and everything somewhere too. So it's gonna write those to a hard drive. Well, I want it to write to a hard drive very quickly, especially because some of my files can be up to one and a half to two gigs. So I need a lot of space. So I just reserve that whole second drive to be the scratch disk for Photoshop. All right. So how do I back that up? Well, I make sure that internal drive one has a backup, right? So whether I'm on a single computer and backing up the whole computer, 
Or if I've got this computer here with multiple hard drives external for my photos, I still need to back up the internal drive, the drive that has all of my applications on it and that has the catalog and the preferences and all of that. Because if something happens to that drive, I don't want to start over from scratch. I do not back up the second internal drive, right? Because that's just the scratch disk space. It's actually blank. Every time you quit Photoshop, it cleans that out. All right, then I have all of these drives. Here there are four of them actually, four two terabyte drives that are encased in one um, kind of piece of equipment here. It happens to be a RAID drive um, that can help with speed as well. So your speed obviously of how fast you work in Lightroom or Photoshop is gonna depend on the transfer rate between your internal drives and your external drives. So you do want them quick. You want the actual speed of the drive to be quick as well. So these external drives that I have that are all encased in one, those contain all of my photographs as well as my Lightroom catalog backup which I'll actually walk you through in a minute, as well as any more supporting files. So whether that's a price list for my gallery images or um, watermarks or anything, I also keep all of that information on the drive. And of course you can separate that out so your photos are on drive you know, one, two, and three within this single mechanism and then you've got another drive that you've partitioned for that. That's up to you. But what's really important, of course, is that this drive is also backed up. So I just have a second drive that's the exact same capacity and they mirror each other. And I set that to back up. Well, you can set it up to back, to back up as often as you want. Um, preferably you'll have some kind of backup software that will only have to write those things that have changed. Uh, my drives happen to be a C drives and it comes with the software required to do that. And so um, that's all taken care of. And in fact, I use that list, same C software in order to back up my internal drive to this um, exterior or secondary backup of the internal drive. So hopefully that gives you a nice overview. Now, when people come up to me specifically and ask, how do they back up Lightroom? There's a few things we need to make clear. So there's Lightroom, the application, right? That's the application that you download, you install, and that runs from your applications folder or you select it from the dock or wherever you start it. Once you launch Lightroom, the application, it works with what's called a catalog, which is a database. And you can have as many of these databases as you want, and you can put them on your internal drive, on your external drive. You just don't want to put them on a network drive. So we need to back up that database or that catalog, and that's separate from the photographs, as you can see in this illustration. So let's talk a little bit about the catalog. If you don't know a thing about catalogs in Lightroom or the database, then probably the first time you ever launched Lightroom, Lightroom created the catalog and it's in your pictures folder, regardless of if you're on Windows or Mac, that's where it stores this catalog. Now, if you've created additional catalogs, I'm not exactly sure where those catalogs would be, but in Lightroom, it's very easy to find them because you could go here underneath the Lightroom menu, you go to your catalog settings, and in the general area, it actually tells you the location of the catalog, and if you want to, you can click the show button and it would actually show you where that catalog is. So your catalogs are easy to find. If you have a lot of catalogs, you could just use a search mechanism on your computer through the operating system. And if you wanna find them all, just do a search for .lrcat. That's the Lightroom catalog and that will show you all of your different catalogs. So you have this really important catalog that contains pointers to all of your photographs, right? Because your photographs, don't live in the catalog, you view them through the catalog, but they actually live wherever you put them on your hard drive. So you have this really, really important catalog or database, and you wanna make sure that you back it up. Well, if we go back to the drawing here in Lightroom, and we close this catalog setting for a moment, you can see that my Lightroom catalog, it was on my internal drive, and therefore it's getting backed up on this other disk. So I do have a backup of my most current catalog, but Lightroom can also create incremental backups. And let me show you how you control that. So we're gonna return back under the Lightroom menu, go back to catalog settings. Of course on Windows, this would be under the edit menu. And right here where it says backup, 
This is how you to determine how frequently you want Lightroom to create a backup of the catalog. So again, this is an incremental backup. So it would back something up, say, if you started this last week, to back up every day, then when you exit, then it would make another backup the next day. So it would continue backing up. So you'd have an incremental backup from day to day. So I've set mine right now to every time Lightroom exits so that I can show you the option that comes up, but you need to select one of the options here that you feel comfortable with. I would recommend that you at least back it up once a week, if not more often than that. So I'm gonna say every time Lightroom exits, and now we're actually going to exit or quit out of Lightroom and it's going to ask me to back up the catalog. So I've told it how often or the frequency that I want it to back up, but where do I want Lightroom to put this incremental backup? Well, this is how I choose that location. So why don't I put these on my same internal drive? Well, I don't need access to these. I mean. I might someday if something fails, right? I mean, the whole reason to have this incremental backup is, is for this problem where if I lose both my internal drive and the backup of my internal drive, at least I would have this incremental backup. So I probably don't wanna save them on the same drive as my most current catalog. So what I do is I choose where I want to save them. In this case, you can see it is on that external drive in a folder that I've just named LR Backup so I know what it is. Here's the backups and here are the different backups. Now, Lightroom will continue backing up at whatever interval you selected. So eventually you'll wanna come in here and kind of clean this out. Like you can tell by the date when they were backed up. So just, you know, I like to keep at least five or so in here, but then, you know, once it reaches 10 or something, I'll go back and actually delete those. And if you actually click on one of these, you can see that those files aren't really that big because it's just the catalog file. We're not backing up all of the files, like the preview files, because those can be regenerated really easily. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to choose this. And then I'm actually going to skip this time just for the sake of the demo. And we'll go back in to Lightroom here. All right, so that takes care of my current Lightroom catalog, right? It's on my internal drive and I've got a backup of that. My incremental backups are on my external drive and I've got at least five of those. So what about my photographs? Well, like I mentioned, for me, it's just easier to put them all on like in one area on one set of drives. Um, I know I used to have like, at least half a dozen just separate hard drives and then it got too confusing. And, and for most people that might be fine because when you're done with your jobs, you may rarely ever access those older photographs. But for me, because I'm making composites all the time, I really want access to all of my images. So I want them all online. So it was, it was a little bit more expensive for me to buy that, uh, but it's worth the convenience for me. Okay, so all of my photographs here, my catalogs, my supporting files, they're all on the external drive. I've got a backup of that external drive. That's only two copies of all my photographs. So I know some people think two copies, that's plenty. Um, what I didn't put in here in this drawing uh, was that I actually have it backed up once again. So I actually have another set of drives and um, I keep those drives off-site so they're not at my house so in case something happens to my house or my studio I want to make sure that I've got another set of backups somewhere else and I in fact even have another set of backups burnt to um, DVD but really DVDs are kind of going away I mean I I don't even have a DVD player on this machine so um, they're okay for if I got really really desperate but hopefully if one drive goes down I've got a backup. If my backup goes down, at least I still have those images in at least one other location. So I would really highly, highly recommend that you do that. Okay, we also need to just talk a little bit about um, presets. So presets are really important. You spend a lot of time in Lightroom, maybe in the develop module making a preset or in your metadata area making you know your contact and your um, copyright presets. You might make book templates or slideshow templates. All of those, they all live in one location. If we go here under Lightroom, under the Preferences, or under Edit on Windows, and we go to Presets, here's a little shortcut to take you to your Lightroom Presets folder. And we can see this Lightroom Presets folder is on my main internal drive, right? In the library, App Support, Adobe, and Lightroom. So these are all of my presets. So 
this is automatically being backed up because it's on my internal drive. But I have more than one computer, and so a lot of times I want to access these presets on different computers. So the other thing that I do is I take this whole folder and I drag that to my Creative Cloud folder right here so that it is up in the cloud so that if I go switching to another computer, I can pull down this entire Lightroom folder. Now, I wouldn't use the web interface in order to do this. I would simply go to the cloud and just say, open the folder up. There's the Creative Cloud Files folder. I can access this from either of the computers that I have, and then I can pull all those down to make sure that I have them on other computers as well as the backups. All right, if we return back to the presets, this is also where most third parties install their software to be used with Lightroom. So again, it's automatically being backed up because it's saved on the internal drive, and that is getting backed up. Of course, with your applications, whether they're third party applications or Adobe applications, you definitely want to make sure that you also register those applications just in case you lose all of your computers for some reason. All right, and finally, the supporting files, I think I already mentioned that, that they're on that external drive, and so they're automatically getting backed up. Excellent. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming. I know that um, the first time you go about setting something up like this, it can be a little daunting, but once you get it in place, then it just works like a charm, and you will sleep much better at night knowing that all of your information is backed up. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me.